Is there a better version of the switch light coming? Wake me up when September ends. That's right, if you are planning on hibernating for all of September until October 8th when the Switch OLED comes out, I've got the news for you that you need to catch up on before you go to sleep. We have a major Switch Lite competitor coming. Like, honestly, I think Nintendo should be a little worried. This is the first time I've seen an actual real competitor come to the market. And we finally have actually decent games coming to Nintendo Switch cloud streaming, and one of them's on sale. <laughs> And last but not least, as we get closer to spooky season, you know those knockoff Nintendo costumes are coming and I have found some gems for us that I cannot wait to share. And don't forget to subscribe. Yes, it is my goal to get to a thousand subscribers so my mom is no longer ashamed of me. Next up is Wide Boy. What's Wide Boy? If you haven't seen, all over the internet have been these images of a modded Game Boy that is extra wide. It actually kind of resembles a Switch Lite. This is created by a YouTuber named Elliot from the Retro Future. It looks cool. <laughs> it's also just in general basically useless, which is why he created it kind of as a joke. I know in the video too, he said he hopes somebody from the future finds this and is like, this is really wide, a little too wide. So why am I bringing this up in our video? Well, when I was looking into this, I actually went down an internet rabbit hole and found a secret part of Nintendo history. Ooh. That's right, Nintendo actually did create a Wide Boy. What? So the actual real Wide Boy that was created by Nintendo allowed you to play Game Boy Color games on your Nintendo 64. This device was not sold in retail stores, but was used in the final rounds of the Pokemon League Summer Training of 1999. And while it was not sold in retail, it was sold to developers and for some reason magazines, I guess like, for press attention <laughs> for the hefty price tag of $1,400. Anyway, it was just a super interesting piece of Nintendo history that I personally had no idea about and hopefully you learned something new too. Cloud streaming is finally getting good on the Switch. That's right, you heard it like previously it seemed all of the actual good games on cloud streaming were all in Japan which is good for people in Japan, but really sucks for us in the United States. Well, I've got some good news for you. We are actually getting some decent games. Hopefully this means that Nintendo is starting to put more effort into cloud streaming because I think it's super interesting. If you don't know what cloud streaming is, it is a place where you can play third party games streaming through Nintendo. You don't have a physical copy um, and you do have to pay the full price of the game, usually about $60 but these are games that normally would not come to the Switch. Another bummer though with it is that you need to have a strong internet connection because you are streaming it from the internet. So it's not necessarily something you can play a travel version of. But again, it's games that we normally wouldn't get, which is really exciting. Maybe this is where Hogwarts Legacy is going to come to the Switch. Like this seems like an easier way for them to do that. There are a lot less changes they would have to make in that way. Currently streaming on the Nintendo Cloud service for those of us in the United States are Control Ultimate Edition, A Plague Tale Innocence, and last but not least, Hitman 3. Hitman 3, do a little star next to it in your mind because not only is there a free demo, the free demo, morning though, only lets you do three minutes of gameplay, so really not that much, but it is also 50% off, so it's only $30. It is not the usual $60 price tag. Resident Evil 7 and Assassin's Creed Odyssey are also available on this cloud streaming service, but only in Japan, which makes me so bitter. Those are so good. Come on, Nintendo. Give us the good games in America too. We can handle it. Haven't we been through enough? We've also got a couple games coming to the OLED. Ooh, you can obviously still play them on your regular Switch, but the OLED will be out by then. We've got Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy coming. I am so excited for this game. I've been wanting to play this. This looks super fun and comes out October 26, 2021. To the cloud, obviously. It's been out. 
And we've also got a Plague Tale Requiem. So, you know, if you've not gotten enough of all of this going on outside and you just gotta play those Plague Tales, <laughs> good news for you. If you have a Switch, you can play them on cloud streaming. I have a secret. Okay, you didn't hear this from me. If you wanna play those cloud streaming games on your Switch and you're like, but I don't live in Japan, I can help you. All you need to do is switch to a Japanese Switch account. So when you like do your Switch, you pick what country, pick Japan, which will again, it'd be difficult if you can't read Japanese, but still, is it worth it for the games? Switching to a Japanese Switch account will allow you to play these games. The connection can be a little spotty because obviously you're not in Japan, but is it worth it? I'll let you decide for yourself. Something else that just in general makes me more excited for the OLED too is cloud streaming works best with a really strong internet connection and having that already built into the OLED is going to be a game changer. I have the funniest knockoff Nintendo costumes to show you. It is the beginning of costume season and there is nothing I love more than a really bad knockoff. All of these can be found on Amazon and I do have those links for you if you wanna get them in real life. <laughs> if you do, truly, please send me a picture of these costumes. I'm dying to know what they look like not on the internet. All right, first costume, drumroll. <laughs> oh man, this Sonic costume. <laughs> I kinda want this, I kinda do. <laughs> I like that they're allowed to say Sonic the Hedgehog, so somebody at some point maybe signed off on this? Who knows? I love the pose. It's like a very low effort run. <laughs> You're thinking about running, but not quite ready to commit yet. I actually personally have a tragic Sonic costume backstory. Uh, I was invited to a party with my husband, obviously before all of this happened. And they were like, hey, we do this party at the end of the year that's like all the holidays combined. So it's like part Thanksgiving, part like Christmas, we and like part Halloween. So there's like also a costume contest and you can like win for like best costume and we do like a white elephant and like the best, like worst white elephant gets a prize, like really hyping us up. Like, so my husband and I go all out and we're like, we're gonna be Sonic. But like the two versions of Sonic, like from the movie, like the bad CGI version of Sonic and the good CGI version of Sonic. And so my husband was the bad CGI version of Sonic. And like, if you don't remember, the old CGI Sonic's legs just looked so gross and weird. And so we painted my husband's legs blue, like literally painted them, the whole thing. And he wore like super short shorts. We were committed, okay? We show up to this party and no one is in costume. It was awful. We did win the $20 Amazon gift card for best costume because literally nobody else was dressed up, but at what cost? Next up is this off brand. Among Us costume? <laughs> Imposter! Literally. <laughs> Although I will say, it does look super comfortable though. And you could like, if you're a kid and you're trick or treating, I bet you could <laughs> steal a lot of candy and hide it. <laughs> hide it down your shirt for sure. <laughs> Important things to think about. It literally looks like blueberry violet. Like if you also went in this costume and was like, I'm Violet from Willy Wonka, I would believe you. <laughs> Why be Violet slash Among Us when you could be Game Kid? I love this because like, there's also a boy in this costume. So he could just be the game boy. <laughs> also, if you look at the detail in the back, it does look like there's a game in that's being played. It says Superb Marcelio. <laughs> I just got it. <laughs> Superb Marcelio. It's like fancy or Super Mario. <laughs> Super Mario, please, that's so blase. I'm Superb Marcelio. <laughs> also, the more I look at this costume, the more there's actual details. And I appreciate that. I, I give this costume rating a 10 out of 10. Why be a Joy-Con when you can be a joyful controller? <laughs> These Joy-Con costumes are great, truly. I like them. You know, they tried to get the colors right and they, <laughs> I like that they were like, of course, 
blue boy, red pink girl. Also, I noticed a very interesting detail of this costume for my LGBTQ plus friends. But on the girl's costume, if you zoom in on the buttons, instead of being X, A, Y, and B, it's Q, W, E, R. Show your pride for both Nintendo and being yourself. Final one, it's like a basic knockoff costume, but I still picked it because I just love the title. It's a knockoff Yoshi, which truly does not look that bad, but the title is Child Video Game Plumber Bros Dino Costume. I just feel like that's a lot. I'm sure, again, if it passes the P test, this looks like you would have to have like someone unzip you from the back, but you know, it's fun. It does also only come in kid sizes, but I'm sure, I'm sure there's an adult alternate out there somewhere as well. All right, so if you've been watching our videos, like it seems every week there's a new Switch emulator. There was a Super Mario 64 browser edition, which I, I still feel like they should have called it the Super Mario 64 Bowser edition like it was right there. It was right there But now we have one that's actually playable on an Xbox Yes, you can play Nintendo games on your Xbox using the in console edge browser You would still be using that Super Mario 64 browser edition emulator But this is a super interesting loophole and honestly, I don't know how long it's gonna last What I do know for sure is that once Nintendo gets wind of this there is no way they're not gonna try and shut it down So might as well enjoy it while it lasts also be sure to follow us on social We've got some fun stuff, sword content coming soon. Uh, what else is there? My face? All right, time to crack those knuckles because we are getting down to business. The first like actual strong competitor for the Switch Lite is getting ready to release. And while it comes from an indie platform, I do think that at least if they actually fulfill what they're claiming to fulfill, could again be a real competitor against the Switch Lite for like half the price. Its name is Ain Odin. It has the possibility to emulate the GameCube, PSP, and 3DS, and also have the same capabilities as a Switch Lite. Allegedly. Again, I have not held one of these in my hands. Who knows? It could be a whole ukulele situation for all I know. Don't know. Not this kind of ukulele. The game ukulele, which was a not Banjo and Kazooie game made with a lot of the original team members of Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, we had a lot of high hopes for it. I was a backer, I was really excited, um, and the game looked really great. And then when it came out, I, just, I feel like it didn't live up to its potential and I am not the only one. But I don't want the same for you with this Ain Odin. That's the point of what I'm saying is take everything with a grain of salt, right? Like uh, any Kickstarter can seem really amazing and then... The Ain Odin comes with three different versions, the light, the base, and the pro. The prices range from 165 to 275, which has the actual switch light somewhere in the middle. You're still not paying as much as a full switch. And again, it does have emulator possibilities and a lot of really impressive specs. So it is something to think about. Again, something to think about. And if you really are interested in supporting them, right now they have a lot of really good deals for backers, but, Again, major things to consider before you give anybody money on the internet is just, there's always a possibility for a letdown. You could get a real Switch Lite for about that price. And truly, I think there's gonna be a lot of really great Black Friday deals for the Switch Lite, so you might not wanna jump ship yet. But if you are looking for something more powerful than just a Switch Lite and really want a handheld console, something to think about. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys had fun. This is like literally my guilty pleasure is just like looking at dumb Halloween knockoffs. I was gonna say see you guys next week, but I guess we see each other more than once a week because we're besties, so. That was my best friend. She's a real bad switch, gotta own money. <laughs> don't need no OLED on the dance floor. I don't know, I don't know. There's something there. I'll workshop it, I'll workshop it and bring it back to you. Oopa, loopa, doopa dee dee. <laughs> You going to Halloween party. <laughs>